Acts 5 But a certain man named Ananias, was Sephora his wife, saw the possession, and kept back part of the proceeds. His wife, also being aware of it, and brought a certain part and laid it at the apostles' feet. But Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit and keep back part of the price of the land for yourself? Why it remained, was it not your own? And after it was sold, was it not in your own control? Why have you conceived this thing in your heart? Why have you not lied to men but to God? But Ananias, hearing these words, fell down and breathed his last. So great fear came upon those who heard these things. And the young men arose and wrapped him up, carried him out and buried him. Now it was about three hours later when his wife came in, not knowing that what had happened. And Peter answered her, Tell me whether you sold the land for so much. She said, Yes for so much. Then Peter said to her, How is it that you have agreed together to test the Spirit of the Lord? Look, the feet of those who you have buried your husband are at the door, and they will carry you out. Then immediately she fell down at his feet and breathed her last. And the young men came in and found her dead, and carrying her out, buried her by her husband. So great fear came upon all the church and upon all who heard these things. And through the heads of the apostles, many signs and wonders were done among the people. And they were all with one accord in Solomon's porch. Yet none of the rest dared to join them, but the people esteemed them highly. And the believers were extreme, were increasingly added to the Lord, multitude of both men and women, so that they brought the sick out into the streets and laid them on beds and couches. That at least the shadow of Peter passing by might fall upon some of them. Also a multitude gathered from the surrounding cities to Jerusalem, bringing sick people and those who were tormented by unclean spirits. And they, and they were all healed. Then the high priest rose up and those who were with him, which is the sect of the seducers. And they were filled with indignation, and laid their hands on the apostles and put them in common prison. But at night an angel of the Lord opened the prison doors and brought them out, and said, Go, stand in the temple and speak to the people all words of his life. And when they heard that, they in, in, entered the temple early in the morning and taught. But the high priest and those with him came and called the council together, with all the elders and the children of Israel, and sent to the prison to have them brought. But when the officers came and did not find him in prison, they returned and reported, saying, Indeed, we found the prison such securely and the guards standing outside before the doors. But when we opened them, we found no one inside. Now then the high priest, the captain of the temple, and the chief priest heard these things. They wondered what the outcome would be. So one came and told them, saying, Look, the men whom we put in the temple are standing in the temple and teaching the people. Then the captain went with the officers and brought them without violence. They, for they filled the people, lest they should be stoned. And when they had brought them, they set, that set them before the council, and the high priest asked them, saying, Did we not strictly command you not to teach in his name? And look, you have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine, and we s intend to bring this man's blood on us. But Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey God rather than men. 
The God of our fathers raised up Jesus, whom he murdered by hanging on a tree. Him God has exalted to the right hand of, to be Prince and Saviour, to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. And we are his witnesses to these things, and so also is the Holy Spirit whom God has given to those who obey him. When they heard this, they were furious and plotted to kill them. Then one of in the council stood up, a Pharisee named Gamaliel, a teacher of the law held in respect by all people and commanded them to put the apostles outside for a little while. And he said to them, Men of Israel, take heed to yourself what you intend to do regarding these men. For some time ago, to do his words up, claiming to be somebody, a number of men, about 400, joined them. He was slain. And all who obeyed him were scattered and came to nothing. After this man, Judas and Galil, Galilee rose up in the days of the census and drew away many people after them. He also perished, and all those who obeyed him were dispersed. And now I say to you, keep away from these men and let them alone. For this plan or this work is full of men, and it, will, and it will, will come to nothing. But if it's for God, you cannot overthrow it, lest you can be found to fight against God. Then they agreed with him, and they had for the apostles beaten them. They commanded that they should not speak in the name of Jesus, and let them go. They departed in the presence of the council, rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer shame, for his name, and daily in the temple, in every house, they did not cease teaching and praising Jesus as a Christ.